Rivas. I'm here with Ron Archer, owner of Archer Travel. Today's topic is fundraising. Um, as you all know, there's fundraising needs to be made for a lot of 501c3 organizations such as youth sports, churches, uh, schools, um, just a lot of different programs are out there that are looking for fundraising ideas. For those that don't know about my background, for 20 years, I ran a youth soccer program that um, always was doing fundraising. Every other month, we were looking for fundraising to keep the price down and to uh, keep the kids on the soccer field. We've done community cards. We've done car washes. Uh, we've done, you know, golf tournaments. Ron's been a part of candy all of them. bars, candy bars. <laughs> We've done it all. And um, last week, Ron and I were talking about fundraising, and he showed me a fantastic program with Carnival Cruise and this wonderful idea to not only put money in your pocket as an evolution agent, but also to help all the nonprofits and group charitable group um, out there. Sorry, I'm fumbling over my words there, but it's a great program that Ron's developed for you guys to present to groups out there. So uh, without further information, Ron, why don't you go right into it? Well, before we get into it, let me ask you a couple of questions about fundraising, because I sure. think I think in addition to using Carnival and using Cruise Lines uh, as a fundraising device, um, not just the money aspect, but let's talk about the time and the energy aspect. So when you did when you did different fundraising programs, how many kids were how many kids were in your soccer league? Eight hundred. Okay, so you got eight hundred kids, and what was the, let, let's take a product? You would sell a community card. Community card. And how many community cards would each child in the program have to sell? They'd have to sell ten community cards each. So they've got to sell eight thousand community cards. Yes. Yes. And how many times did mom and dad end up buying them? They bought 90% of them. 90%. <laughs> Why? It's just the kids and the families don't have time to go out there and sell to the neighbors and sell to family members. And I think uh, family members get in, get bombarded all the time with it. So, so did you really sell all 8,000 or did you end up selling a percentage of that? We sold a percentage of it. We never we never met our goals. We had a lot of dreams, but never met them. So what was the, what was the average? 50%, 60%? I would say 60, 70 if it was a really good fundraiser, if we really knocked it out of the park. So how much, how much per, per, how much, how much per card did you raise? We raised for community cards, I would say $10. So 4,800 cards, uh, six, let's see, you, I'm sorry, how many kids did you have? 800. So six times eight is 48, so you'd make $48,000. Yeah. Would you really clear $48,000? No. So what were the other expenses involved with that? Well, you have to split the card, the community card with the organization. So okay. that was half of it. So it was $5 went to us and $5 went to them. Okay, so your 48 is now 24. Right, and then we had to do promotion. We had to market it. So we had to spend marketing dollars on getting out there. We had to do a website. We had to, you know, make signs and banners and, and on the so now you're down to 20,000. Right. And, and then it's, there's other add-ons you just don't realize. And how, how many, so you'd have to get out to 4,800 cards of, so basically you got a bunch of upset parents because they're forced into buying the cards. That's correct. So why not just have them make a donation? <laughs> that, we, it would have been a lot easier. It would have been a lot easier. Okay. It would have been a lot easier. So, some of the other programs you and I have done, yep. you know, we've sold raffle tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, we've sold a hundred raffle tickets at a hundred dollars and we would take $3,000 and we would buy, you know, we, I would negotiate with tour operators. And so, you know, how hard was it to sell a hundred? You know, we, by the way, we'd sell, we'd sell all hundred cards. We'd clear $7,000 for you guys. And how much of that money did you keep? <laughs> Oh man, I said pretty much all of it. Yeah, we pretty much, but it got to the point where we still had a, other expenses. We did because we had to promote it. We had to spend money on marketing and get it out there to the family. So it took time and energy. So okay. the, the biggest the biggest expense was promoting it and getting it off the ground and and buying marketing. You're spending marketing dollars. So let's talk about let's talk about your target audience for fundraising. Um, Youth sports programs. Youth sports programs. Churches. Okay. Um, th there's so many groups that charitable groups. There's a, a boys and girls club. There's um, 
<coughs> so many different types of organizations out there that we can market. There's um, so at risk youth at risk kids. Okay, so anybody that comes under the 501c3 banner. Yes. Okay, explain them what a 501c3 banner is. A 501c3 banner, as Ron says, is for is for nonprofit organizations. They file with their own state to get a nonprofit um, number. The idea is for them not to make a lot of money. The idea is to provide a service for the community. Uh, let's say it's the Boys and Girls Club. Um, they're trying to provide a service for the for the Boys and Girls Club. There's at risk youth children out there. In the youth sports world, it's provided service for the kids to get out there and play sports and try to keep the cost down as much as possible. And the parents who donate or organizations who donate to the 501c3 can use it as a tax write-off. I don't know if, I don't know if churches are actually 501c3s or not, but religious donations are also tax deductible. Yeah, and, and, and by yeah. the way, the 501c3 is tax deductible. So right. anything that people donate or anything that they do is is, is a tax deductible Absolutely. expense. And okay. it depends on your state. Talk to your local CPA to find out because every state's a little different. So you said 501c3s are not looking to make a lot of money. Actually, they're looking to make a lot of money. <laughs> they just can't, pro, they, they just can't, um, they're not lucky to build a profit structure for right. their organization. Yeah, that's what I meant. Right. I'm thinking profit and I apologize. Yeah. So, they're trying to raise as much as they can to help, help their organization out, yes. Okay. So... We're going to go through a couple of programs where uh, you guys, Amanda, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Um, we're going to go through a couple of programs where uh, I think Carnival has come come together with, uh, or a program where Carnival has come together, and and uh, it's really kind of interesting. Um, Carnival, if you sign up a group with Carnival Cruise Lines, and that group is a 501c3, a church, a youth organization, uh Anybody that's a nonprofit trying to do good in the community, you could promote that to that group. Carnival Cruise Lines will donate $4 per day per person for the cruise. So if you've got a seven day cruise, uh, that's $28 per person, that's $56 per cabin. You need a minimum of eight cabins. So if you've got what's 56 times eight is uh, four, that's six, six times eight is 48. It's, uh, uh, what did I say? He's much better in math than I am. You said so 56. So you got 400, you got about $450 in, in uh, a donation without doing anything, just promoting that group for, um, for a church or an organization you know, and, and making that donation. In fact, what you could even do is you can even sign up for a group and you can designate a 501c3 that you want to have the donation go to. And then you can, you can have Carnival donate to that 501c3. The only thing that they've got to do is help you to promote it. Um, and it's, there's no cost, there's no risk, there's nothing out of anybody's pocket. So, you know, that's a really, uh, it's called Cruising for a Cause. Do you um, want Amanda to show it behind? Amanda? Do you actually have it, Amanda? Yeah. Can Amanda, can you display it behind to the side of us? So Evolution Family Members, it's called Cruising for a Cause. It's a Carnival Cruise Line fundraising program. If you're interested in this, please email me at reggie at archertravel.com. I can send you um, these three sheets of paper that Carnival provides us. My email address is R-E-G-G-I-E at archertravel.com, and I can get you guys started with this program. Sorry, Ron, I interrupted you there. Not a problem. Um, gosh, think about it. If you had 100 cabins, you've got uh, $50. I mean, you've got over a $5,000 donation yeah. if you could build a group. And by the way, guys, I did, a, I, I did a cruise. I've done several cruises for organizations, and they typically run anywhere from – I've had them, you know, as low as eight, 10, 12 cabins. Um, typically they're in the 50 to 60 cabin range. I do a lot of cruises in the 150 cabin range. And I've done several cruises in the, in the two, three, 400 cabin range, you know, so different organizations, organizations are always looking for interesting ways to make money. And What's interesting about this type of an approach is it's not only great for the organization, it's great for the people that want to support that organization because 
people that promote, for example, or support public uh, public broadcasting. You know, a, a lot of public broadcasting stations will do cruises. Um, Viking Cruises is a is a, um, a a huge sponsor of Masterpiece Theater on on uh, BBC, and they do fundraising cruises. They probably do a half a dozen fundraising cruises a year for public broadcasting to support Masterpiece Theater. So, um, you know, whether it's really on the high scale or on the low scale, organizations are a great way to promote your, you know, promote your travel agency by doing something good, uh, promoting a cause. So really want you to think about that. Uh, Reggie and I can always help uh, in terms of discussing, you know, talk to your church, talk to your, you know, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, uh, campfire organization, YMCA, uh, youth soccer, youth baseball, uh, girls softball, uh, youth football. I mean, there's so many organizations that are out there. Uh, kids at at-risk youth, uh, rehabilitation, rehab programs. You know, there's so much that's out there that uh, that people want to support, and they want to. They they they. If you had people going on on the on the uh, cruise that could talk about their programs, you know, these people get really excited about that. So, uh, and again, the other spin on that is, you could just take a cruise and say, guys, on this cruise, we're going to promote, and we're gonna have a speaker from uh, the Jim Riley Outreach Program. So Jim Riley comes out and talks about his, uh, his at-risk youth outreach program and, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't really have anything to do with the cruise. It's a bunch of friends that got together, but, now Carnival will donate to the cause. So it's something to think about. That's, that is one very simple way to do that. Can, um, I, can I say something real quick? The good thing about Carnival Cruise, the fun thing I like about it is it's for everyone. Carnival Cruise Lines is not just for adults only, it's adults and kid friendly. So you can reach out to everybody to go on Carnival Cruise and do the fundraising program. Um, don't feel like, oh, it's only for adults. But the Carnival Cruise Line is fantastic for kids. So your youth sports groups, your church church groups, at risk groups, everything. The, the Carnival Cruise is, is a fun Carnival Cruise Line. And for Drew, I know he's watching this. He put the fun in fundraiser. I know he'd say that. Or Carnival put the fun in fundraiser. So that that's a plug for you, Drew. Anyway, sorry, Ron. I wanted to throw that in for you. Well, and you know that's a great question too because you know Irene could also be yeah. uh, very. Uh, uh, helpful in helping you to make flyers, make presentations, yes. uh, actually put PowerPoints together. So Carnival will support uh, any of these efforts from the Evolution agent. So uh, Reggie and I are going to show you how to even enhance fundraising and make a lot of money doing it. So uh, we're going to take a minute. We're going to move a couple things around here and uh, show you something else. Let's put this. We have an easel we're going to be putting in here, so just bear with us for two seconds. Don't spill my coffee. I'm not going to spill your coffee. And while you're doing that, we did a poll in chat, and we polled everyone to see have you ever participated in a fundraiser? And half the chat said yes, and half the chat said no. So now's the time to participate in a fundraiser, right? That's right. Get involved. Get involved in your community. Okay. We need to raise that camera just a tad. Raise it up yep. or down? down. Okay. Uh, almost there. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's almost to the bottom. All right, let's move this over here so you got some room on that side. Okay. All right, so let's talk about group cruises. Uh, I've done this before, but this is actually, it's kind of a fun exercise. Carnival has a program uh, with groups where we make 16% commission. So let's say that you're selling, let's say that you pick a seven-day Eastern Caribbean uh Upscale, you got a, a kind of a church that wants to get to their high end uh, parishioners that uh, that donate to the church. So let's say your average cost is a thousand dollars. So seven day cruise, cruise only. 
no port taxes, no fees, no gratuities is a thousand dollars. Now I use that number because it's easy in my head um, to uh, calculate from. But also on top of that, it's 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 actually a, a it's in the price range. So on that thousand dollars, you get a group rate where you get one free for sixteen. You also get gap points, which could be anywhere from two to eight, depending on the cruise, depending on the date, depending on, on the program. Um, and you can also mark this up because you are doing a fundraiser and you know people are going to be willing to pay a little extra. Uh, typically we've marked up cruises for profit, for nonprofits as much as $100, you know, 50 to $100 per person. So when everything is said and done, we're gonna take, let's take a, let's take a normal group of, uh, 32 cabins. Okay. You've got a 16% commission. So that is $160. You get one free for every 15. Now that happens to end up with a five and a, with a six and a quarter percent discount on the cruise. So at a thousand dollars, it's $62 that you're also going to get as far as the freebies. Now, how do you get that money? It's it's you're not charged by the cruise line, so you just get you don't you, you don't give it away. You sell it and you take the money and you put it into the into the commission income pool. So you've got 106 at 16 percent commission, and this is the one free for 15. Okay, on top of that, you've got gap points. What's a gap point? A gap point is a promotional point that the cruise line will give you to help to promote and make that cruise successful. Okay. It's used as marketing dollars, promotional dollars, these types of things. So you can turn your gap points into an enhanced commission on each cabin. Um, and it varies depending on how many gap points. So let's say you're going to do, you're going to turn in gap points for $25 per person. Okay. So that's pretty good so far. Now, on top of that, because we're going to have some expenses, we're going to bring one of the people from the 501c3 who's going to do some seminars and, and some, con, you know, some conversations. Sure. And, you know, don't forget that the cruise line is going to give you a free cocktail party. So, it's, you know, somebody there can just speak at the cocktail party. So we're going to add $50. Okay. So that means you've got 160, a 62, 222, 272, uh, 297. So that's 297 dollars per person off of selling a thousand dollar Carnival cruise. Now, just for sake of argument, we're going to call it 300 bucks. 300 times 32 is 64 people. This is the per person about. 300 times 64 is uh, 12,000, I don't know, six times, six times three is 18,000, uh, four times three is 1,200, 18,000, so 19,000. So, $300 per person, which we did from the previous page, times 64 people is $19,200, I believe. Somebody check my math on that. You cleared $19,000 to sell 64 people, 32 cabins. Yes. That's pretty good return. It's a fabulous return. So let's say you were very aggressive and you gave half of the money back. You're still clearing almost $9,500. Right. Let's say you give them. Now, typically what I do is I give them the $50 and a third of the commission generation. Uh, so that, I don't know what that comes out to be, but let's say it's $100. Well, they're making $6,400. On a fun cruise. On a fun cruise. On a fun activity. So, so 
guys, fundraising by selling groups is, now the question is, some people go, well, I don't want to give away my money. Fine. If you could promote a cruise through an organization or through a group and you don't have to donate anything back, that's great. But why would they want to? What, what, what's in it for them? Organizations need revenue in which to stay alive. They need revenue in which to stay profitable so they can provide their services to the community. And But if you can find an organization whereby... Now, by the way, let's talk about this. We're talking about this as a fundraising opportunity, okay? This criteria, this ingredient, this calculation not only has to can not only be used for nonprofits it can be used to generate a ton of groups oh yeah because all you got to do is find a pied piper that's it you find somebody in an organization and you give them a percentage of the profitability you give them a piece of the pie now you know mark cuban on shark tank always says would you rather have 100% of a grape or your 10% of a watermelon <laughs> Yes, exactly. You know, so the question becomes, you know, you want 100% of all the commission and maybe sell five cabins, or you want to split something with somebody 50-50 and, and sell 50 cabins. You know, this, these types of, these types of calculations, 16% commission, that's built in. One free for 15, that's on the contract. Gap points, markups. People want to travel with people. Now, you can also mark this up. There are some cruises. I marked this up two hundred and fifty dollars yes. because we'll do a we'll do a short excursion into town with a dinner, or we'll do T-shirts, or we'll do some sort of, of, of mementos. We'll do group pictures. We'll do a, a number of other things that will go along with this. Great. So there's always a way that you can justify the revenue that you're charging. Now, okay, let's say that this is half. Okay, if this is five hundred dollars, yeah, there's still. You're still gonna you're still gonna clear ten thousand dollars. You know, mark this in half. That's still ten thousand dollars. So it works on three day cruises, four day cruises, seven day cruises, ten day cruises. It works on every cruise level. It works with Carnival. It works with Royal. It works with NCL. Carnival, I think, is your broadest, widest spread uh, cruise line that works with these types of cruises. They've developed their own you know, uh, cruising for a cause program, uh, whereas a lot of the other cruise lines have not. They've also got kids programs on board. They've got great play areas. I mean, Carnival <coughs> is a family experience. And most of the 501c3s are having to do with family and uh, really attract all age brackets. So um, we can get into other fundraising ideas later, like the raffle tickets and these types of things. But this is Carnival Week, and we're promoting Carnival as a brand and Carnival as a product. And as Carnival uh, gets back to it and gets out in the marketplace, then uh, we really see that uh, you know revenue is going to explode. Uh, throughout the rest of the week, we've got other programs that are going to be based around the Carnival product. Also, I did a I did a uh, I did a uh, seminar yesterday on. What are we looking for? What's going to happen? How, what's going to happen when the cruise lines come back? What does the cruise line industry look like going forward? When's it going to open up? What are the things that are going to change about cruising in the short fall or in the short term rather? So uh, a lot going on here. Yeah. This is a great program. Call Reggie. Call me. Call I Well, don't call Irene. Call us first and we'll put you in touch with Irene. <laughs> and, uh, you know, get out there and promote cruises. Now's the time to do it. The cruise lines are going to open up. The CDC has got the cruise lines at this point, could change, but it's opening up as far as June 1. Uh, so really fundraisers are a six to nine month advance sale. So I would say that by the fall of this year and the spring of next year, you're really looking at a, re a very robust cruise market and almost returning to some sort of normalcy. The advantage here with fundraising with Carnival Cruise is one, families want to get back, people want to get back out and travel. Number two, every nonprofit organization is trying to raise money. We're, they're thinking of how do I raise money, you know, moving forward. So this is the time to do it. Get them out and travel and help them raise money. You, you're going to get their attention. So use your resources out there at Evo Family. So you're still involved with your marketing. You're still involved with uh, the soccer program, the guys in the soccer program, mm -hmm. right? Yes. How much revenue did they lose over the last year? 
Oh, half a million. And what's their shortfall they really need to make up? Uh, about a hundred grand. What are you doing your Carnival Cruise Group? <laughs> We're going to be doing it pretty soon. I just learned about this program. I'm now going to be emailing the board of directors saying, you want to make money. We have a lot of families that want to get out and cruise. So we're going to have them come into the office and have Ron do the same presentation to our youth sports organization to help them raise money. My son's baseball team is going to Cooperstown in New York, and they want to raise money. They want to learn how to raise money. So I'm going to present this program to them to get them to go on a cruise to help raise money for their baseball organization. So, yeah, there's a lot of ways to make money. What's your question? We have questions. Yeah, you guys want to take questions now? Yes, sure. I'd love okay. to. Um, what type of groups would you suggest we do a fundraiser with? What kind of groups do you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Schools, churches, baseball teams, soccer teams, uh, 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 rehabilitation programs, uh, at-risk youth training programs, um, YMCA, you know, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. Yeah, any any organization that has a, a nonprofit status. Um, the one I would suggest that you really target the most is the one you're most passionate about. Because if you're passionate about it and you're involved with them, then you have credibility and those people will trust you and it will be easier for you to have a successful program. So, um, the question being, you know, what organizations do we go after? Go after the ones that you're passionate about. Go after the ones that you have um, a contact with. Um, also, there's a thing called the rule of threes. Let's say you want to go after, you know, uh, KCET here in Los Angeles is an organization that we've done some work with. And when I started, I, I wanted to make a, I wanted to make a promotional uh, fundraising pitch to them and. I didn't know anybody in the organization, but I knew somebody that knew somebody. So that's the rule of threes. You don't know somebody that is directly in an organization. There's a likelihood that you know somebody who has a contact within that organization. And you can use that person you know to make the introduction. So find out something you're passionate about, something you're involved with, something that um, also something that has a, a fairly substantial um, you know, group of people. You can't really put together much of a fundraiser, much of a of a of a cruise group, if the organization you're talking about's got ten people in it. Doesn't really help you much. So I would look for organizations that have several hundred people in them. Um, you know, you can do Kiwanis. You can do you know fraternal organizations are always looking to do fundraisers, and they love to party together. So uh, you know, depending. Uh, the Masons. I mean, there's there's all kinds of organizations that are out there. Uh, fraternity alumni associations in many cases have 501c3s, fraternities, sororities, college groups, college alumni associations, because they're raising money for kids for scholarships. So whatever you're passionate about. We have more questions, Amanda? Awesome. Okay, next question is, does Carnival donate per person for children too, or just adult passengers? It's adult passengers. Uh, it's it's the first and second in the cabin. It's not third. And, it's not it's not discounted rates. It's not on the free cabin. It's it's uh, adult. Well, whether you're adult or a child, it's the first and second person in the cabin. Right, first and second person. Okay. Next question. Um, when is the earliest booking I could do a group a uh, fundraising group? <laughs> when do you want to do it? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Uh, you could do a booking. I mean, the cruise lines are going to open up in June, but if the CDC doesn't come back and give them authorization to open up, you could be delaying. You could have be, being. Uh, you would have to be responsible for rebooking that at a later date. My recommendation: I wouldn't book a group, and it's not because of when the cruise lines are going to go out. I would not book a group. I would say six months is a minimum. In order to really get people to get excited about something and be able to save for it and maximize your selling capabilities, I'd say six months. So six months from now would be uh, March, April, May, June, July, August. August or September, I would say would be would be huge. Uh, by that time, I think the capacity on the ships are going to be open. Vaccinations are going to be more widespread. Uh, the cruise lines will have their protocols down so that it, there'll be less uh, intrusion in your, you know, I was talking about 20, 25 different things yesterday. They're going to change during, you know, cruising. Can you imagine getting on a cruise ship and doing a fire drill? 
you know, during the COVID environment, you're not going to have, you know, 50 people lined up for a fire drill in one small location or, or 500 people in there in their bars and lounges. You know, they're just going to have to follow protocols. So uh, I think by August, September time, I think a lot of that will be more relaxed because there'll be more vaccines out there. I think the, the, the infection rate will be going down. I think ports, more ports will be open, more ships will be back in action. So, uh, yeah, I would, I would book now. I would put the program together now, but I would execute it in August or September. Okay, perfect. Next question is, can I organize this based in New Zealand? Sure. There's no, I mean, the, it's mathematics, guys. Uh, now, I don't know what New Zealand's tax laws are. Um, so anything that would be a nonprofit in New Zealand, uh, you know, the math works the same, no matter whether it's in, you know, U.S. dollars or New Zealand money, it, it, it doesn't really change the mathematics. Uh, the commissions are pretty close. The uh, Australia is talking about, or uh, I should say, uh, Carnival's talking about reopening in Australia, New Zealand, unless you want to sell, you know, Caribbean out of New Zealand, you can certainly do that. So yeah, the mathematics works the same no matter where you are. All you gotta do is, is uh, make sure that you're within the government regulations. And oh, by the way, um, part of the cruise, uh, whatever portion of the cruise is donated back to the, uh, to the 501c3 becomes tax deductible to the participant. So if you're making a $200 donation, they get a $200 tax write-off on their cruise. Awesome, great. Okay, next question is, can you post the document you showed before in the Travel Cafe website for us? Reggie will absolutely do that, or Amanda will do that. Yes, yes we will. Actually, just hold it up, they can take a picture. <laughs> they want to see it. There it is. Okay. It's actually three they pages, so, yeah. Any more questions, Amanda? Okay, sorry. One more last question. When will you be doing your next group, Ron? <laughs> um, funny you should mention that. I have a proposal out to a group right now. Uh, it is for 150 people with a two-day event. Um, this is kind of interesting. It's, it's one of my normal groups. It's 150 people, a two-day event, uh, and they're they're going to be staying overnight in a deluxe uh, luxury tent. They're going to be glamping. And the program includes entertainment and it includes food. It includes all the accommodations. I mean, and we had to bring in, we had to bring in the chefs. We had to bring in the tables, the chairs, the tents, the porta potties, the showers. I mean, it's, it's a huge production. And honestly, the, uh, the budget on this thing came in at $210,000 for 150 people for two days. So there are organizations out there that have large budgets that, you know, uh, that I've been very fortunate to work with. That's one group I've got going right now. Um, I was supposed to, I was, I was supposed to go on a fall, fall cruise in Europe on a riverboat cruise uh, that we're thinking about promoting. Um, I, we, have, uh, we have the family reunion, which is my next group in uh, July in Las Vegas, Nevada, of which we've already opened up sales and it's selling is quite robust. We're very excited about the family reunion. Um, I encourage all of you to take a look at that. What What's the page on that? Where's the website? Uh, it's go to archertravel.com forward slash uh, Evo family reunion. And you can find it in the Travel Cafe website. And you can find there it in the go. Travel Cafe website or the Facebook. Go to all our social media platforms It's posted there. Everywhere everywhere all right it's all up to you now pal ron thank you very much for educating myself and all the evolution family members um and i'm looking forward to booking my next cruise for my group so thank you everyone and evolution keep doing what you're doing you guys are fantastic thanks guys have a great week thank you